I'm going to be describing the analysis and identification of a pearlescent pigment, bismuth oxychloride, that was only used for a very short period in North American automobile original finishes. The chemical formula for this compound, BiOCl, suggests that there are two possible structures, one of which has bismuth in the plus one oxidation state with a covalent bond between oxygen and chlorine. And the other alternative is a completely ionic structure where you have cations of bismuth plus three and anions of oxide and chloride. And these would have very different absorption properties in the infrared in that the former would have an OCL stretch, the latter would have only far infrared absorptions. And in fact, the ionic structure is the one assumed by this compound, and that is in fact what we see, a single far infrared absorption. The properties of bismuth oxychloride include uh, a morphology consisting of squares or octagonal crystals, which would be great for identification, but the problem is that these crystals fragment very readily. So if you look at an actual paint, you don't see this type of crystal. These crystals do have a smoother microscopic surface texture compared to mica coated with titanium dioxide, and hence they reflect much more light. Their reflectivity approaches that of aluminum. This is really the first synthetic pearl pigment. It was developed 50 years ago, and it's been used for several decades in various beauty care products, as shown here, as well as in printing, inks, plastics, and an assortment of different types of coatings, including its use on imitation pearls. This Merck ad illustrates some of the special effects that you can achieve using this pigment. But this pigment really was not suitable for extended outdoor use because of its tendency to darken on exposure to light. And chemically, this was produced by photoreduction of the bismuth plus three to the metal. But in 1992, Engelhardt patent, patented a new form of this, which made it more light durable. And this included a coating of cerium hydroxide, which countered the effects of light exposure. And it did so by oxidizing the bismuth metal back to plus three oxide. This new formulation was used by PPG and BASF to produce a black metallic finish for the Chrysler Corporation, color code shown here, more commonly known as VAW with the trade names Deep Slate Pearl Coat or Dark Slate Pearl Coat, and this was first used on some 1998 Chrysler vehicles. And one is shown here, this is actually a 2000 Chrysler Concord with VAW, and under a stereo microscope, these flakes look exactly like metal flakes in that they're irregular and they also have very high reflectivities. These are infrared data for one of the VAW finishes produced by PPG, and this is used on metal substrates. The clear coat, uh, it was used in a Canadian plant for Concords, Intrepids, and minivans, and the clear coat spectrum indicates it to be an acrylic together with very small amounts of melamine and styrene, whereas the base coat is an acrylic melamine enamel, also with a very small amount of styrene, and you can see that in this shaded area, there is a weak, sharp peak here at about 278. We collected the formulation that was used in automotive paints produced by Engelhard, and this actually comes as a liquid dispersion or paste, so we dried the paste, took a slice, and obtained the spectrum shown in figure D. And you can see that the acrylic resin used here, is, it, well, it's an acrylic, that's used as the resin, but we also see this rather broad absorption here that centered about 300 wave numbers, which doesn't look anything like that. But if we take a very thin film of this material, then you see that there is, in fact, a very narrow peak at about the same wave number as what we see in the base coat. This is another finish used on metal substrates produced by BASF at uh, it was produced at the Chrysler Jefferson North plant for Jeep Grand Cherokees, 
And the clear coat is a, both the clear coat and the base coat are acrylic urethanes with melamine and styrene. And in addition, the base coat contains barium sulfate, uh, the absorptions of which are shown here. Barium sulfate is frequently used in base coats and it's serving for, uh, several functions, one of which is viscosity control, which is a means of saying it prevents sagging of paint sprayed onto vertical surfaces. And it's used with uh, base coats that have light pigment loads, that is, that, does, that do not have a lot of pigmentation. It's also used to improve the adhesion of the clear coat to the base coat, as well as to lower cost. In addition to barium sulfate, we also see, of course, our very weak peep, peak of bismuth oxychloride. And finally, this is a finish produced by BASF, BAW color, for plastic substrates, and both the base coat and clear coat are acrylic melamine enamels with styrene, as well as barium sulfate in the base coat, along with our weak peak of bismuth oxychloride. Next, what we wanted to determine was, are there any other inorganic pigments, or even organic pigments, they're gonna be inorganic, that have infrared absorptions that might be confused with that of bismuth oxychloride, or that absorb in the similar region. And in fact, we did find a family of pigments, the cadmium sulfides, or the cadmium yellow and cadmium red. Cadmium yellow is simply cadmium sulfide, and it produces a single far infrared absorption shown here in yellow. And cadmium um, red, which is actually maroon, is a closely related pigment comprised of a solid solution of cadmium sulfide and cadmium selenide compounded with barium sulfate. So again, we see that far infrared absorption shown here together with absorptions of barium sulfate. But you don't have to worry about confusing these for several reasons. One of them is, of course, that these pigments are gonna occur in either non-metallic yellow or non-metallic maroon. But more importantly, these pigments have not been used in automotive paint since probably the late 1950s or even early 1960s. They were replaced by the lead chromates. We tried to get a more specific date on when they were last used. Unfortunately, the, the uh, formulators I talked to, it was long before their time. The ones who used it are long retired. Next, we wanted to look at any CTS finishes or any finishes that have colors very similar to that of VAW. And when we looked through the reference collection of automotive paints, we found that there are two that had colors very similar to VAW. They're both black metallic base coat, clear coat finishes. And these are spectra of the clear coat and base coats respectively for these two. And you could see that with acrylic melamine enamels with styrene, there's really no, no absorptions occurring down there before below 300 wave numbers. So this provides a pretty good window for uh, detecting that peak even though it's weak. The next thing we wanted to know is what other absorptions are occurring down there because we saw several others and we wanted to know what are these. So we begin by looking at this one uh, finish produced by BASF where we see two absorptions, not, not just in the base coat but also in the clear coat that occur about 477 wave numbers. What these are due to are a form of silicon dioxide known as synthetic silica, and these are used, like barium sulfate, they're used as anti-sagging agents, except that they're used in both base coats and clear coats, especially clear coats. The reason they don't use barium sulfate in a clear coat is because it would adversely affect the gloss. And furthermore, the particles are quite large, they're not transparent, so it's not used at all, whereas um, synthetic silica is used in both base coats and clear coats to serve the same function. What we have here are three metallic monocoats, that is, they're not base coat clear coats, 
and they're from the CTS collection, and two of these have that absorption in question here. So what we did was we simply subtracted this spectrum, which does not have that absorption, from this one to give this result. We subtracted this spectrum from that one to give this result. And in both cases, you could see that the residual abs absorptions are con consistent with that of synthetic silica, but not consistent with diatomaceous or crystalline silica, which are also used in automotive finishes. The other absorption that we see down there is an absorption that occurs in the same region, but it seems to have uh, different properties. It's narrower, and this occurs about 481. We see it not only in that one VAW finish that contains barium sulfate and bismuth oxychloride, but we also see it in the two CTS collection samples that have very similar colors in their base coats. So we wanted to know what is causing this. So we looked at silicates, we looked at the liter literature and said, found what other silicates are used in automotive finish layers. So we came upon a group of silicates known as bentones. Bentones are simply organic compound derivatives of montmorillonite. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> montmorillonite. All right. And what they're used for are anti-settling agents. That is, during pigment st uh, paint storage, you don't want all the stuff to fall to the bottom. They're used as anti-settling agents with what are called high aspect ratio pigments. Simply put, that means flakes, like metal flakes, pearlescent flakes, and bismuth oxychloride. So since we're seeing it in these uh, metal flakes and bismuth oxychloride, we thought, hey, that's what it is. Especially as when you look at these, there's not only one absorption, but there appears to be two. Well, we knew that these were not due to silica, this peak here, because it was too broad, plus the fact that there appeared to be two absorptions. So we compared it, and sure enough, there's a doublet there. Unfortunately, they don't match. Even though there, we collected four bentones, which are the most common used in automotive finish layers, even though there are differences in some features, these frequencies don't vary that much. And furthermore, the more we looked, we found this probably correlates with that unknown feature. So we decided these are really not bentones after all, so we looked again at what silicates might produce an absorption down there. And the closest one we found was mica or muscovite, shown here. So the next logical step is, hey, these are probably pearlescent pigments based on titanium dioxide mica laminates. So we collected uh, several of these, and we collected the non-colored ones because these are occurring in black. And these are known as silver or white micas. So here's a spectrum of a silver mica we collected. And if you look at the VAW finish, which contains uh, bismuth oxychloride, you don't see it here, as well as the C two CTS finishes that have this in their base coats, you can see now a very good ag agreement between not only the shapes, but the frequencies of this triplet of absorptions. So that strongly suggests these we're dealing now with mica pigments. And here's some further hints of the presence of a mica pigment. These are the two CTS finishes, clear cold base coat, and we see that absorption there. We simply subtracted this clear coat from the base coat, getting this rather ugly result. But even though it's ugly, we see there's some clarification in this region, but we already see that here. But more importantly, when we look at this region here where the silicon oxygen stretch occurs, we do see what appears to be residual absorptions of the main silicate absorption as well as the side peaks. The frequencies don't quite match, but again, these are hints of the presence of this mica pigment. The next thing we wanted to know was, hey, these are micas. They're known as white or silver micas. They don't produce color. They're used simply for their reflective properties or to produce some luster, whereas we know that the more conventional mica pigments produce color 
by either absorption or interference with laminates of ferric oxide, chromium oxide, and others. So we collected five pearlescent pigments uh, from the same time period, and we found they fall into three groups. And here are the absorptions of the three groups, and you can see they're distinct from the non-colored ones. Bismuth oxychloride does not appear to have been used at all in refinishes. If you look at the refinish formula for color VAW, it specifies use of this pigment, which is a PPG extra fine white pearl, and it has a binder, an acrylic binder, but you could see that it also contains the same white or silver mica. Here's some XRF data. I'll go over it very quickly because we don't have much time. These are the three VAW finishes. We want to see bismuth, chlorine, and cerium, especially cerium because it's unusual. So we see the L lines of bismuth, very strong M lines of bismuth, but chlorine K lines overlap, so we don't see those. With an XRF going to 55 kV, or at least detected to 40, we were hoping to see the uh, K lines of cerium because we knew those would be distinct from barium. Unfortunately, these base coats are very thin. They are not infinitely thick for XRF, which is what we'd like to see. If you use thicker samples of the pigment, you do see these readily, but in base coats, uh, a single layer, they're very weak. We do see the cerium lines, however. When you blow them up, you can see them. But remember, two of these had barium sulfate. Barium complete, completely dominates, so we can't see cerium in these. We can see differences out here, but again, the cerium is quite weak. That's the silicons from the synthetic silica, silica, aluminum, potassium from the mica. Here's a spot analysis of SEM. We took the brightest uh, fragment that we would see using backscattered electron image, hoping that it would be closest to the um, surface, and we do see we don't see barium, but we do see cerium. We do see it in the XRF. This pigment was only used for three years because the main reason was that the pigments tended to fragment from the shear forces that were generated in the automotive uh, plant recirculation system. These are some of the models. They're on your handout. And we have 60 samples of this uh, finish that contains bismuth oxychloride, also mica, barium sulfate. So please help yourself. Uh, if there are any left after this room clears out, they're going in the garbage. <laughs> Thank you to Scott Ryland for his many helpful discussions, to Dr. Diana Wright for sending us samples from the FPI National Automotive Paint File, and to my trusted assistant who's shown here advising me on how best to obtain paint spectra. And I think the questions are uh, to be safe for a later period, but at which time you are certainly welcome to ask me, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>